On today's episode, we welcome the current United States Ambassador to Armenia, Ambassador Richard Mills. He has received nine Superior Honor Awards from the Department of State. Together, we will discuss the current state of Armenia, development, branding, tourism, foreign investment, the Ambassador's priorities, our mutual love for music, and more. I feel like a regular here now. Welcome. Very Thank glad you. That you're here it's today. nice to be back here. I enjoyed so much the first time that we had a chance to talk. I'm Likewise. Glad. If you'd like, maybe we'd go get a cup of coffee and then talk over coffee or something. Would that be nice? You know, I've always wanted to see the cafeteria here. You guys have delicious looking desserts. Unfortunately, we do. Yes, <laughs> they're incredibly good. Wait, so is the chef Armenian or American? We have a terrific Armenian cook and chef, and kind, of, really? kind of a staff back there of three or four, and they're all Armenian. This, this is an Armenian catering company, and they do a terrific job. It's a nice mix of Armenian and American foods. No burgers? Actually, you can get a burger. Yeah? You can get a burger. You can get a burger and a tuna sandwich and a hot dog, but you can also get, uh, most days, haravats and some good yogurt. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So we have both. We have both. So the kitchen is closed, I guess, huh? Just it desserts? Yeah, so your only option is this... Delicious-looking desserts. These delicious-looking desserts. Cheesecake. Cheesecake. A lot of your colleagues said that they like gata. <laughs> so everyone has gata. They do. They do. Do you want to split a piece of cheesecake? You're going to be good. Let's split I, a piece of uh, cheesecake. I wasn't going to, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not often we get... Isn't it hard to stay fit here. in Armenia, though? Because it's such a carb-rich <laughs> diet, right? There it are, is. like, fresh-baked goods everywhere. Fresh-baked breads rice, potatoes. It's really a carb rich diet. It's, it's tough. Um, you know, I have delicious. to admit, it's so good and it's yeah. so tempting and you have to constantly kind of push back. And people here are so generous and they want you to right? try everything. Yes. And, um, uh, you know, the, the idea that, you know, moderation. No such thing no exists. No such thing. No. You've never had enough. You have to have a little more. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Are we going to sit here? We are on a beautiful location, and there's a lake and a beautiful view, so let's go outside and sit, sit outside if we can. Great, yeah, let's okay? do it. Great. Yeah, of course. I love it out there. Are you okay with the tray? Do you want me to help you nope, with that? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. I was a waiter in my younger life, so... Really? Yeah. So you have a lot of diaspora artists here? I would say about half the art here is from uh, Armenian-American diaspora artists. The other half is just um, famous artists uh, in the States hmm. um, who contributed, who were asked to contribute. Ready? So what were you working on today? Well, actually, I was planning a trip to Megri with my staff because mm. uh, I haven't been down there in a while, and we're supporting a great project, if, if I may toot our own horn a bit. Uh, there's a beautiful old medieval church down there that has these really fascinating frescoes uh, that uh, are a little bit in need of repair. So there's something at the embassy called the Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation, and it allows us to identify important projects around the country. Mm that we could help restore and repair, and so we decided to help restore these frescoes. I'm gonna have a piece of cheesecake. Everyone knows I have like eight cups of coffee a day. It's, you know. Armenian or American? American. Ah. Is Hard it good? Hard yeah. Show. Is it like Oops. cheesecake in the States, or do you feel a difference? Uh, it's pretty much like New York cheesecake. Yeah, it's New York cheesecake. Ooh. Do you think a country needs branding? I think it's important in this age, absolutely, for countries to get the message out about themselves, what they offer, to create awareness. Um, branding's the first step. Then you have to actually deliver on, on what you can offer economically to tourists, uh, et cetera. Um, I've been really pleased, frankly, in my three years here to see how Armenia has worked to brand itself, to get itself known in the business community, in the investment community, and in the broader tourist market. In that sense, what do you think are Armenia's greatest strengths and weaknesses? Well, this country has enormous strengths, uh, starting with an incredibly well-trained entrepreneurial uh, workforce, young people that are on the cutting edge of in information technology, uh, among other industries and sectors. And that's a great selling point. Also, uh, Armenia, from a business sense, 
It's really at the crossroads. You have access to now through the uh, agreement that was signed in November, access to the European Union market. You have access to the Eurasian Economic Union market. Um, and that's a real selling point, I think, for me. Those are great, great assets. Um, a weakness, to be honest, especially perhaps this month that's in my, I'm thinking about it. I wish Armenia could take better advantage of its women, of its female workforce. Um, Armenia still has, according to the International Labor Organization, um, the highest rate of female unemployment in the post-Soviet space. Mm -hmm. And this is still a country where, again, all the analysis shows women are significantly underpaid compared to men who do the same work. And that would be such an enormous boost to this economy, to this country of all the women in Armenia who would like to work were able to do that. What other assets do you think Armenia isn't taking enough advantage of when it comes to branding the country? Well, um, you, you know, you have enormous range of things that you can do here, speaking of tourism branding. Um, you know, there's adventure travel here, there's the cultural cafe life of Yerevan, uh, there's the enormous history here, there's the archaeology. And of course, there's the unique history of the Christian faith here and the Christian, Christian tradition here in Armenia. And sometimes I think Armenia still needs to do a better job, perhaps, of selling all that. I'm talking about the full range of experiences an international traveler can, can have here. Um, I think, certainly my experience is many Americans know about Armenia's history as the first Christian nation. And when they think of traveling here, they think, oh, we're gonna just see monastery after monastery after monastery. And there are beautiful monasteries here, and I've enjoyed visiting them. But there are other things to do here too, and I think that it'll be helpful to, to highlight those. That's actually one reason I'm so thrilled that one of the biggest cultural events of the year in the United States every year is the Smithsonian Institute's Folklife Festival, mm. as I'm sure you know. Uh, this year, the Smithsonian's Folklife Festival in Washington, D.C., on the National Mall, where hundreds of thousands of Americans come, and foreigners, will be showcasing Armenia's cultural traditions and the traditions around the Armenian home and the dinner table and how those traditions have been passed on through generations. And that will, I think, showcase some really unique aspects of Armenia that a lot of Americans and even Armenian Americans aren't fully aware of. In the period of your ambassadorship, you have set four priorities for yourself and for the U.S. Embassy. What are those four priorities? The first was to increase business, trade, investment between our two countries, mm -hmm. um, which has always been an important part of the embassy's work. But I think when I arrived in particular, my assessment was that the economy here, this country, had reached a, a point where reforms were in place, the economy was open enough, the business environment had reached a point where there were real opportunities for U.S. investment and trade and Armenian trade and investment that would benefit both countries. So we've really tried to make that an emphasis. Second priority, and it's related to the first, was to help ensure that there's a level playing field here for everybody who does invest, everybody who does do trade here, that they'll be treated the same regardless of who they are, whether they're Chinese or Russian, American or, or European. So we've been supporting voices in Armenia they want to ensure that level playing field and that kind of transparency in governance and in the economy. A third focus, and it's been a focus ever since we established relations here, Sona, was to, again, promote the growth, the strengthening of human rights here, protection of human rights, and democracy and democratic institutions. And then lastly, uh, to talk with the Armenian people about U.S. foreign policy around the world. I think the embassy had done a really good job before I got here. My predecessor has done a terrific job of explaining to Americans and Armenians why the relationship between us is so important and the values we share and our history together. But we probably had not done such a great job about talking about why the U.S. cares about Ukraine, you know, what our goals are for U.N. reform or uh, trade around the world. So we're trying to do a bit more of that, talking to the Armenian people, especially outside of Yerevan. So that's the four priorities in a nutshell. 
So your first priority to deepen the business and the trade relations between Armenia and the U.S., agriculture was one of the key points, right? Yes, we've been very focused on agriculture. So why is that? Partly because it's still a large sector of the Armenian economy. For all the, I think, you know, flash and attraction of other sectors like the IT sector, which has grown here. And I was excited to see about your involvement with the IT sector. And we are, and we can talk about that. But the agricultural sector remains a huge part of the economy. It still employs a large number of Armenians. And it also is the key, I think, to helping develop the rural parts of this country. And um, we're very focused now in trying to make sure that our development efforts, our assistance efforts, are not so centered on Yerevan, but that we're looking at the, the rest of the country, uh, which I think is very important. So, And that also stops a lot of people from moving out of the rural areas, Absolutely, right? absolutely. Because um, we're as concerned with anyone that Armenians stay here and mm -hmm. contribute to Armenia's future. That's what we want to see too. And then the energy sector was also of key importance because from what I understand, we had the biggest single U.S. investment, private U.S. investment mm -hmm. here recently, right? That's absolutely right. It was an investment by a, a U.S.-based firm uh, in the uh, hydro sector of mm -hmm. the economy here. Uh, and we were very pleased about that investment uh, for several reasons. First, I think it helps diversify the energy sources here in Armenia, which is important for any country. You know, you don't want to be tied to one source of energy. You don't want to have all your energy come from one country or et cetera. So uh, the United States itself has tried to diversify. And so we're really pleased to see Armenia diversify its energy as well. Also, it was a major flagship investment and it's gone very well. And I think it's, you know, sent a signal to the rest of the U.S. investment community and particularly in the energy sector you know, this is a place where you can do business. And there are opportunities here, especially in the energy sector. This was the largest U.S. investment in Armenia's history? Yes. Wow. Yeah, we're very pleased about it. What do you think needs to be done to attract more business investment here in Armenia? Well, first, you hit on one thing, and I think the government is trying to do this, and they're, they're doing, I think, a pretty good job just getting awareness out there, branding Armenia, talking about what Armenia offers an investor, um, access to all these markets, great location, this incredibly well-educated, um, cutting-edge workforce that Armenia does have. So that's the first step, and I think the government's doing it. They've also, as I said, they really reformed this economy. This is a pretty open economy um, where it's pretty easy to start a business or start a trade relationship with someone. You know, the World Bank um, has this ranking of ease of doing business index, they call it. And Armenia scores very high. Hmm. So that's all really to the positive. How about tourism? What do you think we need to do to increase tourism in Armenia? Although I personally feel like I've seen an in increase in the last couple of years. Oh, absolutely. I've sensed it too. Uh, I, the numbers seem, and the figures show it, the numbers are up of, of international tourists coming here. And with something we're focused on, USAID here, we're now putting a lot of emphasis and resources into developing the tourism sector. Um, you may know we have this, I really think, great uh, project called the My Armenia Project. Mm -hmm. And it's something USAID is working on with the Smithsonian Institution in the United States, which you know is one of the world's great museums. And they've sent their experts here to help develop tourism as a sector in the country, you know, how, and in a very hands-on way. You know, how do you help the craftsmen in Gumri or Kapan mm. you know, market themselves and shape their products so they, they kind of reflect what international tourists would like to buy or purchase here? Um, to how do you tell a story about, you know, here's my product, here's the story of my product and how it relates to Armenia? Things that sound very small but are really important, I think, to the international tourism market. And My Armenia is doing that. They're also helping brand Armenia. They're putting out YouTube videos. They're putting out social media messaging about Armenia. Um, it's really terrific uh, program. So that's one way we're supporting tourism. The other reason we're supporting tourism too, of course, is as you said, it, it helps with rural economic development. And that's, again, part of our focus. The My Armenia Project, for instance, it's focused on getting tourists to leave Yerevan. Our studies, our analysis shows um, when tourists come, they come to Yerevan, which is great. 
great place, lots to do here, but very few of them really go outside of Yerevan for any lengthy period. You know, they may travel to Garni Temple, they may go to Gerhardt Monastery, but they won't really go anywhere else and spend the night and, and really spend money outside of Yerevan. So that's also what my Armenia is doing, is trying to get people to leave Yerevan and understand that there's enough to do that it's worth taking a trip to some of the other great parts of the country. How exactly do they do that? Well, part of it is my Armenia identified three regions. Mm -hmm. They called hubs, tourism hubs. Mm -hmm. And stop me when this gets too boring, but they created these tour you know, tourism hubs. And the idea is that around the hub, mm -hmm. you develop, and this was an interesting thing I learned, tourists need to hear that there are four or five different things around a hub, and then they'll go spend the night in that hub. Mm. So they're working to make sure there are four or five different activities or things to do around Gumri. Okay. And then market and advertise that. Yeah. You know, and it, it might be, there's a vineyard you can uh, uh, visit. Mm -hmm. There's a great monastery you can visit. Right. Oh, you can do bird watching. And then turn it all yeah. together. They're also making sure, and this is where the Armenian government has to play a part, making sure that there's signs. I know that sounds very basic, right. but that you know how to find that vineyard. Okay. And that there's kind of a path that leads you from the monastery, oh, there's a vineyard over here, and here's a sign that tells me how to get there. Right. And that the guides are trained, you know, in, in explaining how maybe the vineyard relates to the monastery. Mm -hmm. You know, 600 years ago, did the monks tend vines in the vineyard? You know, tie it together mm -hmm. so it seems like, oh, there's a, there's a range of things to do in Gilbert. Yeah. Let's go there. Right. So that's what they're, they're yeah, trying so to do. Yeah, so it essentially puts that part on the map as well, not just Yerevan, where you everyone you, is used you, to There's traveling. a reason to go, spend a couple of days in Gumri. You can be confident. We ran into each other recently at the Marcus Miller concert. Yes. What was the embassy's involvement with that? Well, thank you for mentioning that. Did you have a good time? I had a great time. Yeah. Your speech was very funny. Oh, you're very kind. I still remember <laughs> you comparing Armenians to jazz music. That was actually really great. I think there's a lot of similarities between jazz and Armenians. Jazz is about breaking the rules every now and then. It's... You know. It's about a little, being a little individual. And it's about blending new things in different ways. And when I think of breaking the rules and blending things in new ways and being very individual, I think of Armenia. It was a great concert, and, yeah, and, and, and yeah. Marcus was a terrific performer, right. and I can tell you a state secret. I met him behind the scenes, and he was the nicest guy, right. and so relaxed, and not a diva at all, you know, very... Uh, and, and he asked me, he said, do you think they'll they'll enjoy this? Will they, they like this? I said, trust me, they're going to love this. And you're not a jazz fan at all? No, not at all, not at all. No, I love, love jazz. It's part of the thrill of being here, because this is a culture that really appreciates jazz. That's true. Um, um, yes, we were really pleased to bring uh, Mr. Miller uh, over to perform. Um, you know, we bring American musicians over and artists, partly because it's fun, mm -hmm. and it is fun, but partly because it's a way to sort of show a, a bit about our American life, mm -hmm. a bit about American values, American mm -hmm. culture, and it really is a connection. Mm -hmm. You know, politics, diplomacy, sometimes they can be a little divisive or a little hard to get your head, head around, uh, but something like art, whether that's music mm -hmm. or film or uh, plays or dance, really can bind people and connect people. And we get the best response from Armenia and from Armenians when we bring musicians over and they really can connect to that and learn just a little about U.S. life and U.S. culture. Do you think it's equally important for Armenian performers to go and perform in the U.S.? Absolutely, absolutely. And I would encourage the Armenian government to try and get as many Armenian artists over as they can. There's a rich cultural tradition here. Um, it connects the diaspora as well. Connect the diaspora as well. Uh, highlight the bonds and traditions we have. Um, you know, Armenian Americans have made great contributions to the United States, um, right? From from Kim Kardashian, <laughs> and to share to even you know William Saroyan, who everyone mm -hmm. knows, someone like Peter Balakian, who we're all reading his poetry, and he just won the Pulitzer Prize last year, and people like Ruben Mamoulian, the great film director, who 
I think is little known, but uh, you know, directed the first performance of Oklahoma on Broadway, for instance. There's a great tradition, and I think it would be terrific to underscore that with more cultural back and forth between our two countries. So who would you really like to bring here next? <laughs> um, dream musician to have an Armenian. A dream musician. Well, you know, someone like Beyonce would be terrific. Really? She's so fierce. She's so ah, great. It would that's, be... not a, that's not one I expected. No, I, well, I think she'd have a huge impact here. Oh, she would, yeah. Yeah, she'd have a she'd great... She'd only be like a gazillion dollars to bring here, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah more than we could afford yeah. at the U.S. Embassy. But Beyonce, if you're watching, you've mm -hmm. got a standing invitation. You can stay at my house. So last time we had a George Clooney shout out. This time we have a Beyonce. We have a Beyonce shout out. Shout out. That's yeah. right. That's right. Um, and I hope I have better luck with Beyonce than I did with George Clooney. <laughs> I did not get to meet George Clooney. Well, so. you know, just might happen. <laughs> we still have time. There's still time, George. Yeah, there's yeah. still time. What would you like the rest of the world to know about Armenia? You know, I would like people to know, as I mentioned, how how really impressive young people are here in Armenia. Mm. That the youth of this country, they're engaged, they care, they're committed. There's some great creativity here. Um, there are enormous challenges in Armenia. I know that, you know that. But the country has come so far in 25 years. It really inspires me. Um, I think you may know I was the first desk officer for Armenia in the State Department back in 1991, 92, 93. And desk officer is just a fancy word for I was the guy and did the day-to-day -day relationship with Armenia. I was tracking what was happening. So I remember what it was like here in the early 90s, those dark years. Mm -hmm. And I know how far the country's come. In many ways, I find Armenians sometimes can be a little too pessimistic, mm -hmm. a little too fatalistic. And I find myself reminding them, look what you've achieved in 25 years. And that should inspire you. What do you think a good slogan for Armenia would be? Oh, good heavens, a good slogan for Armenia. Armenia is a unique place that's been able to transcend a very difficult, very tragic history in some ways, but enormous resilience. And so, you know, 500 years after the end of the last Armenian state, there's a new Armenia and it's moving ahead. It's forging a new path. Um, so something kind of something punchy, you know, like mm -hmm. Armenia moving ahead with boldness, mm -hmm. or Armenia favoring the bold, something like that, mm -hmm. something that captures that excitement. Yeah. Because as I leave, I am excited about the future of this place. Mm. It's a real joy to work along not only a brilliant diplomat, but also a very decent human being. So I consider it to be privileged and I don't take it for granted. It's been wonderful working with Ambassador Mills. I've worked with several different ambassadors throughout my career. He's inclusive when it comes to decision making and he respects the job that we have to do and he has faith that we'll do the right thing. <laughs> It may be an undiscovered gem for a lot of people. You don't hear Armenia a lot in the United States, but it really is a wonderful place. It's welcoming. It has a lot of interesting things to do and explore. I, I love it here. You know, I've, this is the third time that I, I'm back, and I just, I always am, you know, I'm attracted to this, this country, to the people, to the nature, and it just keeps pulling me back in. So every time I sort of think I'll get away, I'm drawn back to this to this place. It's a beautiful country. I like to get out on the weekends and, and, and do hiking or um, just see some of the old monasteries, go to Noravank, um, go wine tasting. Armenia is a wonderful place. You get outside of Yerevan. There's so much to visit, so much to see. Uh, I love hiking. We've gone camping, um, meeting with local uh, individuals and t taking the time to learn about them. I think the rest of the world really needs to experience Armenia's hospitality. Uh, it's genuine. People welcome you into their homes. They'll share what little they have with you um, just to feel, make you feel uh, welcome. And, and appreciate it and respect it. And I think that's something that uh, I will take with me and I, I want to share with, uh, with other people outside of Armenia. Well, I think the world needs to know that Armenia is a very um, dynamic place. It's a very, uh, it's, it's safe and it has a lot to offer 
tourists. I see Armenia as a very rich culture, um, a rich history, very hospitable. Uh, I have always felt welcome um, when I go out and I try to use the language, and I emphasize try because Armenian is a very difficult language. Uh, Armenians are always very thoughtful and they have an imagination of what we're trying to say and, uh, and they're willing to engage with us. And so maybe it's the engagement is what's amazing from working here. Maybe undiscovered gem outside of Armenia is really the Armenian cuisine. My favorite dish is dolma. Dolma for me is probably my favorite. Red wine. Gata. With some wine. Mihoskov despanatun navelin ekan vizanere.